Good afternoon, students. Um, today, we're going to talk about combining like terms because when we solve equations, if we see a crazy algebraic expression like this and it's set equal to something and we have to, have to try to figure out well, what does A equal or what does X equal, if it looks like a very long um, and large problem such as the one I have written down, um, that's kind of crazy, right? That seems like it's going to be a lot of steps. However, there's a way that we can simplify our expressions and by doing um, something called combining like terms. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what a like term is and we're gonna do some examples together. So <clears throat> make sure as always, you're titling your page and you're updating whatever page number this is um, on in your table of contents, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk to y'all about is what is a like term? So a like term is when two terms have a variable that is the same within them. So remember, terms are everything that is in between the mathematical symbols. So like 5a is a term, 6x is a term, 3a is a term, negative 11a is a term, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So if I have, let's say like 4a, a like term could be negative 6a. They are a like term because they share the same variable. Or if there was just an A on its own. These three are all what are called like terms because they have the same variable. Okay, so I'm just going to say like terms because of the same variable. Okay, they're like terms because they have the same variable. Um, and just so y'all know, if you see a variable on its own, this is equivalent to like one of that variable. So A is equivalent to one A. Just like if I had like four A's, I could list them as like A, 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 but I'm not gonna do that. The shorter way to write that would be four A. So just so y'all know, um, for future reference, a variable on its own is equivalent to one, the coefficient of one, okay? Because remember, the coefficient is the number times the variable. So like A on its own is equivalent to one times A because anything times one is just itself, okay? This is gonna, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> this is gonna come into play um, in the next bit here, okay? So when we combine like terms, let's say we're looking at an expression such as this, 5a plus 6x minus 3a minus 11a plus 7a, okay? The first thing we want to do is we want to kind of separate the like terms. So some people do this by like circling all of the like terms, or if we have multiple like terms, like sometimes like I'll put a, a circle around all the like terms with a, but then for x, I'll use a different shape. Like I'll put a square around all of those. It just depends. So um, for the purposes of this, uh, if I look, I see I have a lot of terms that have A. So I know that I'm going to be able to combine those. Um, I don't have any other terms with X. So that's not really going to affect like my simplifying process. Um, but if I had another term with X, I would have to recognize that, oh, I have like terms that have X involved with them as well. So let's kind of illustrate what all of the terms that have A are. So we have 5A. And then if I move to the next one, I have 3a, but the thing is, is we always want to look at the sign that is in front of the term. And we want to think about this sign as like the term's luggage, okay? Like this sign goes everywhere with the term, okay? So instead of thinking about this as like just 3a, we're going to think about this as like negative 3a. The luggage is a negative sign. 5a, there was no negative sign in front of it, but you can kind of think of the luggage as like a plus sign, right? If we don't have um, a sign in front of a number, we just assume it's positive, okay? Like the luggage for 6x would be positive 6x, okay? Um, so if we look at uh, 11a, there's also a negative sign. So we're going to attach that luggage with it. And then we have a positive 7a. So everything that I just circled, is a like term because it all has the same variable of A. So if I write all of those down, kind of like if I was solving an order of operations problem and I was like simplifying and writing down, you know, the next step, I have 5A minus 3A minus 11A 
plus 7A, okay? And we want to make sure that we keep the luggage. I'm just going to leave a note. Keep the luggage. Think about the sign as each term's luggage, okay? So if we were to combine all these terms, what we're really trying to figure out is we're trying to figure out, okay, how many A's do I actually have? I have positive five here, negative three here, negative 11 here, and positive seven over here. If I was to combine them all together, um, how many A's do I actually have? So I'm trying to figure out what could I simplify this coefficient to? And the way that I'm going to figure it out is I'm just going to take all of the coefficients and I'm going to combine them. So I'm going to do five minus three minus 11 plus seven. I'm going to take all those luggage signs. And now look, I have a little order of operations problem, okay? And if I was to solve this, five minus three is two. 2 minus 11 is going to be negative 9. And then negative 9 plus 7 brings me back up. I'm going back closer to 0. It brings me back up to negative 2. So all of this is equivalent to negative 2. So what really should go here is negative 2a. And so what I just did is I took all of these terms and I combined them and simplified them into one term with a. So negative 2a. And if I keep that plus 6x, okay, this is the simplified version of this expression. If I combined all those like terms together, this is what it simplifies to. And I can't do anything with the 6x because there's no other like terms. So now instead of having this crazy long expression, now I have this shorter expression. And that's going to be much easier to work with when I have to solve for the variables or if I tell you what a and x are equal to and you have to evaluate them, it's much easier to work with. Okay. So when we combine like terms, we're finding our like terms and then we are keeping the luggage, you're keeping the sign of whatever the term is, and we're just combining our coefficients by either doing adding or subtracting, depending on what the signs are, and replacing it as the coefficient of the like term, okay? So let's look at some other examples um, so you can kind of see a variety of things. So here are three examples. If you want to take a moment to pause and potentially try them on your own first, you can. Um, let me move this back into screen. OK, so if you want to take a uh, pause to like write them down and maybe try some of them on your own and then I'm going to kind of work through them and you can kind of check your answers or write them down and then unpause the video and you can kind of work them out with me. OK, so let's look at the first one. We have three X plus 10 plus two X. OK, my like terms, I'm going to circle them, are three X and two X and I'm going to keep the luggage of signs. So this is three X plus two X, okay? Well, if I have three X's plus two X's, three plus two means I have five X's. So if I combine those like terms, that's five X. So 10, there's no other you know thing that we could simplify that with. So the simplified expression is gonna be five X plus 10. Or I could put 10 plus five X. I could also write it that way, that's fine. Um, if I look at the second problem, my like terms. Well, I don't have any other terms that have the same variable, but I do have two constants. And I know from just like my integer rules, like I can combine numbers, right? Like I can combine um, minus 10 and minus six. Okay. So if I combine that, that's going to be three X and then minus 10 minus six is going to be a negative 16. Right. I have 10, I'm subtracting six. I'm going farther. So I'm going to be at 16. Okay. So this one can combine to 3x minus 16. I just combine the constants together. So sometimes it's not just the numbers or the coefficients and terms that have variables. Um, sometimes it's the constants that can be combined as well. Okay. And let's look at the last example. This one's kind of crazy, um, but let's combine the like terms. So I have like terms of a, so I have positive 4a, negative 2a. I'm keeping the luggage. Ooh, I have c's. I'll come back to those and I have constants, okay? So what I'm gonna do to differentiate between my like terms is I'm gonna put a square around the C's and circles around the A's. And then, oh, I can also combine 10 minus eight. I can combine that as well. I'm just gonna do that right now. That's two. 10 minus eight is gonna be two. 
Um, all right, let's combine the C's. If I have positive 3C plus positive 5C, 3 plus 5 is going to be 8C. And then if I have 4A minus 2A, if I do, if I combine the coefficients, 4 minus 2 is 2. So I have 2A. So now what I'm going to do, now that I have all the terms uh, combined, is I'm going to go replace. So there was a plus sign in between these two. There's a plus sign in between these two. So this right here is my simplified expression. 2A plus 8C plus 2. So now instead of having this really long expression, I have simplified it to three terms, 2A, 8C, and 2. So when we combine like terms, it's really important to kind of make sure that the luggage is attached, the signs are attached to the terms. It's also really important to circle or highlight what are the like terms. And you'll notice I did not do any sort of problem where I took like 4A and added 10. I cannot combine 4A and 10 because they are not like terms. There's no A attached to 10. So I can't combine it with 4a. I can only combine like terms because the terms that have the same variable, or if they're just numbers on their own, if they're constants, and there's no variable attached to them. I can only co combine what is like to each other, okay? Um, I would highly encourage you to make sure you understand these examples, and then once you have done these examples, you can try these practice questions. So if you want to go ahead and um, flip over to where you are uh, writing down your practice questions. You have three of them, okay? On all of these, you are just combining your like terms and simplifying this expression to, you know, the least terms as possible. So number one, you have 3a plus 5a minus 6x plus 6, or I'm sorry, plus 7x plus 5. The second one, you have negative 4a plus 2b, that's a b, plus b, a b on its own, minus c plus 3c. And then um, number three, you have 6x minus 10 minus 5 plus 3x. So work on practicing combining your like terms. Check your answers in the table of contents. And please let me know in class if you have any questions. Have a awesome day.